It's, it's really interesting because um, in, in these moments when we get a, a little lost in our devices and, and we look down and uh, we look in, we, we kind of forget that there's a world there. We, we kind of forget about it because we're, we're really kind of intent on what's going on when we're looking in. I was uh, just sending a little message to a friend of mine in California. I just wanted to connect to her in that moment. And of course, you know, that forgetting, well, let me tell you a little story. A month ago today, I was walking to visit a friend. Every Saturday afternoon, my ritual is I walk across Sydney and I go and have lunch with one of my friends. And uh, I was walking down the street past my place. And I, I came to an intersection. And I wasn't really thinking about it because I was staring down into my device because I was dialing up this American life so that I could get lost in someone else's stories as I had this walk through the beautiful Sydney weather. And, uh, and I came to this intersection and, and there was a car coming and I was sort of dimly aware of it and I didn't really think about it and I just sort of walked across the intersection and it wasn't until after I'd walked across the intersection that with a blast of its horn, this driver brought me back to myself and I realized I'd just walked across this intersection without looking. And if it hadn't been for the good graces of this driver, this Sydney taxi driver, <laughs> if it wasn't for his watchfulness, I would have been killed. And uh, I wouldn't have even known about it, even as the car picked my body up and started to divide it in two. <laughs> and uh, we all have moments like this. We all have these little fiddly moments. They might be behind the wheel. They might be before the wheel. They're the times when when in some sense we're sedated, we're drowning, we're drifting away, slipping beneath. And uh, death, absent-minded, crosses our path, and all of a sudden we're awake, briefly, but we're awake. Now, I've just come from LA. I was just visiting the friend that I was sending a message to, and. I actually said to her, I'm going to be doing a TED Talk, and we talked about it a little bit, and she told me this wonderful story. You see, she and her partner have become superstars in what they do, and they've spent the last five years jetting around the world and teaching people the amazing things they know and being taught by them. And it was wonderful because these were two minds in perfect simpatico. So they were sharing with each other, they were sharing with people, and then as she said, he got a Blackberry. <laughs> and... Uh, he would spend all of his time staring down into it and glancing periodically to I'm listening. <laughs> and uh, that's the way it is now. That's, that's who we are. Because uh, we're being drawn in two directions. We're being quartered and we're being divided. We're, we're looking down and... and we're looking in and out, and we're here and we're there. But no man gets to serve two masters. We can uh, love the one and hate the other. So we resent this persistent little voice, which gives the flesh priority, you know, over this down in the out. And, and my friend told me about one time, one trip, they touched down someplace particularly exotic. I think it might have been the Amazonian jungles of Peru, and there was no signal. <laughs> there was no interruption. There was no distraction. There was nothing to come between. It was like having him back again for a whole week. Just him listening to her. But it didn't last. Yeah, it never does, because uh, that spell wears off. And uh, you're back in range again, and you forget.
Now, we all see these things, we all meditate on these thoughts, and we see ourselves slipping beneath, and we see others fading away. For me, it wasn't until a particularly bright morning in March that everything became completely clear. Because I was walking, there's an intersection that's not far from my house. It's the intersection of Broadway and Abercrombie Streets in Sydney. And it's a, a big intersection, it's nearly in the center of the city. And I was standing there waiting for the light to turn. Whoops. Did I, did I do something? Well, I was sitting there waiting for the light to turn, and, and uh, across the intersection, I spied a mother, and she had a pram, and she had a toddler in the pram all very neatly strapped in, and the light turned, and we began to cross the intersection. And the curb at Abercrombie Street is actually a bit high. It takes a little bit to be able to negotiate it if you're taking a pram across the intersection. And so the mother started out across the intersection and mishandled it and nearly dumped this poor child into the street. If the child hadn't been strapped into the pram, it would have been lying on the street. And the mother pulls the pram back up onto the curb and begins to negotiate it again. And once again, the child is nearly dumped into the street. And you wonder, now, what is the reason for this? Well, how could something so easy suddenly become so difficult? At no point did that mother ever take her goddamned iPhone away from her goddamned ear. <laughs> and this is when I had my moment of clarity. Because that was when I got to see with my own eyes how that goddamn device had made that mother forget her maternal instinct. And that's when I realized that something big, something much bigger was going on. Because uh, if you fiddle with the maternal instinct, that's it. We are all toast. <laughs> it's down deep inside of us for a reason. It is essential to our survival. And it, too, is fading away. It's being bleached to white by a much brighter light. So, here's where we get to the sort of nitty-gritty part. This is, a, this is the part you've all paid for because this is the futurist. Well, the futurist is about to give you a bit of a look into the future, so I want you to all open wide and drink deep. We seem to be in some sort of positive feedback with our devices. Now, there's more proofs for this than I can share. I've just given you three, starting with me, my friends, mother on the street. But uh, what about the rest of humanity? What's going on with them? Well, this month, perhaps even this very day, there will be five billion mobile subscribers on planet Earth. There's only seven billion people on planet Earth. So that means that we're all basically nearly there. People who had never seen a phone 10 years ago now own a phone. It's becoming synonymous with being human. Because it is good. A mobile brings real wealth to the poorest people in the world. And because of that, it is impossibly alluring. You know, take this and dial, and you will have food and knowledge and hope. How could anyone resist that? You know, how could we resist that? And we don't really 
even need it, but it's becoming next to impossible for us to live without it. And uh, it's growing because uh, our devices do things now that we couldn't even dream of just five years ago. And with every new thing, it's becoming more and more and more alluring so that right now, at this very late stage, all of the engines of capital and power are bearing down to make this device more and more and more alluring, which attracts even more capital and more power, and you begin to see the shape of the loop that we're caught in. So that even if I took my phone out of my pocket and tossed it away, it wouldn't matter. Even if I told you that the kind folks at TEDx Canberra have bins outside so that you can throw your mobiles away and we can recycle them safely, it wouldn't matter. Even if we went forth and convinced all of Australia to give up their mobiles, it wouldn't matter because China and India and Africa will not be throwing their mobiles away. They will not surrender. This new tool, this tool is bringing a transformation that they desperately want. There is no way to stop this. We are already well down in it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are mid-singular. And it's not my thought to make you fear the future, but rather to make you conscious of it so that we can prepare because it is all changing it has already changed it's going to change a lot more and in an instant things can become unrecognizable now that brings me back to my friend in California. Three weeks ago tomorrow, she left her partner for half an hour and returned, and there had been an accident, and he was dead. And everything that she knew, everything that they had planned, 300 years of life together, that was all gone. It's beyond all comprehension. I mean, it's a complete, sudden, absolute disconnection. It's nothing filled with nothing, filled with pain. And what could I do when I saw her? All I could do was grasp her hands and uh, hold those hands tight and whisper love. And when she could, we talked eye to eye and soul to soul. Something that was immediate and direct and present. And we remembered back before the horror and we connected to the good and she told me a funny story about her partner and his crackberry and we had a laugh. And she told me another wondrous thing because the news spread as it does these days over Facebook. And in a few minutes, everyone knew. And, and the horror, the horrible, sick, unrelenting horror, it met its match for a little while as one person and two and then 10 and then hundreds, all of whom had been touched by her and her partner over these years. They all reached in and they reached through and they shared a jeweled memory. They remembered the good and cast out the pain. And it helped, and it does. And this is the paradox. Because the others in there, they are not real. But their touch is. And I know this. So I reach out and touch her from halfway across the world. The real world breaks. The real world is torn. It is not the only world we have. 
But now, in this moment of nearly perfect balance, when we stand between the worlds, I'm here today to remind you that because this ends, because flesh fails, it is more important. Now, the other will always be among us now. This will not. And so, my wish for you today is that every time you look down and in, you hear another voice, vital, urgent, telling you to look up and connect.